there's definitely something that happened to these people that, that was earth shattering and completely has shaken up their lives. If you want access to the best real ghost stories. I think she was afraid that they were going to make her little friend go away. Real accounts of the dead coming back to life. She had a spirit that she had gotten very close with. Real video and images of ghosts. A little boy. Then you need to be an extra podcast person, also known as an EPP. Sign up to be one for only $5 a month at ghostpodcast.com. I stared transfixed as the mist began to gradually become more solid and translucent and to my shock more human in appearance your support is what keeps our show on the air for only five dollars you'll have access to hundreds of epp exclusive episodes updated weekly exclusive video content and more behind me in my kitchen i hear a little girl say are you my daddy where's my daddy keep us on the air and get access to the best ghost stories and more now at ghostpodcast.com and thanks for your support Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You're about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. The phone number 855 855- 853-4802 to share your real ghost story with us. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com or uh, email me the audio file if you want to record it on your uh, mobile device. Tony, T-O-N-Y at realghoststoriesonline.com. Of course, you can interact with us all over social media. Our Facebook page, kind of like our forum, if you will, where lots of folks interacting back and forth, sharing their stories, feedback, things of that nature. Just uh, look up at Real Ghost Stories Online. Twitter, we're at Ghost Story Radio. Instagram, at Ghost Podcast, which I just posted some real creepy photos there the other day that we took. And uh, Snapchat, at Ghost Podcast uh, as well. That's more so where I uh, turn myself into the puppy dog with the uh, video effects and bark in uh, to the camera for the kiss filter was pretty fun that was interesting where you were uh kiss the mm-hmm. band mm-hmm. that was that there was the abraham lincoln one uh the other <laughs> week as well which was kind of creepy and weird yeah i'm trying to think what my favorite one has been so far i've been like a child uh, with uh just with excitement looking at that app of just what it does because i'm just amazed by what it can do <laughs> and uh, there was a real creepy one earlier uh, or late last year it made you look like you had like black makeup on and it was dripping down and it was just creepy. Mm-hmm. There was one that made you look like a, a very, like an old, old, scary looking woman as well. Uh, and that was fun too. Yeah. I enjoyed those. The the creepier, the better, sure. obviously on there. So anyway, uh, join us on, on social media and uh, we can uh, invade other parts of your day as well. There you go. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number. I didn't say Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again. So. Well, we're obviously here. So I, I need to let you know that, though, because they, they would just know there's a voice over there. and I'm the voice on the other side of the desk. That's Jenny Bruski. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore the, the the voice on the other side of the desk. Yeah, the, the pay man, no attention yeah. to the man behind the curtain. There you go. Uh, let's go to our first call of the day and uh, see what we got for a ghost story. Hi, Brewskies. This is Amanda from Pennsylvania. Just calling to tell you a story about um, my weekend at the cabin in the woods. And my stepdad at the time owned this cabin. Um, in Butler County in the mountains and we went there and I got into an argument with my stepsister long story short I wanted to go into the woods and she didn't Um, so angrily I sort of stormed away from her (laughs) and went off into the woods by myself I was 10 and um, I had a good old time wandering around but eventually I got lost and the sun was setting so I'm trying frantically to find my way back home and I can't So basically I end up sobbing in the middle of the forest and then I I feel this hand on the back of my shoulder and I look up and it's this man and he's very clearly Native American and um, dressed in, I'm not really sure how to describe it, it was sort of like a tunic and pants, Um, I'm not really sure what they were made out of. And he looked down at me and he spoke in a language that I didn't understand. And when he saw that, he finally just sort of held out his hand and said, come. And I put my hand in his and 
he started pulling me you know, through the forest or like guiding me and um like he felt solid he felt real and then it took about an hour and it was dark and by the time that he stopped we were at this like thorn bush area and um my at the other end of it it was like probably five or six feet wide and on the other side of it i could see the cabin and i heard my mother calling for me and frantically just my screaming my name and i looked up at the man and he smiled at me and he pointed towards the cabin and then he disappeared like he didn't walk away he didn't run off he didn't you know say goodbye or anything he just vanished from sight right in front of me and um then i of course i waited through the bushes scratched myself up pretty good but i got home and ever since then um when we used to go to the cabin and everything after that i would see him sometimes in the forest when me and my sisters were playing and I, it was just a really positive experience that I kind of wanted to share. Um, it was really, really cool. And uh, I hope maybe I'll see him again one day. Um, and also an answer to previous caller, Ashley. Um, yes, you're not alone. There are others like you and I'm one of them. Um, so don't feel bad. It happens to other people too. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my story and you guys have a great day. Bye. I really like that, how it, it's very evident this is a ghost or an angel or whatever you want to call it that shows up just to make sure she gets home safely mm -hmm. on a regular basis yeah it's, it's not just the once and done no it's kind of like it, it it's a guardian spirit mm -hmm. i like that story thank you for sharing that uh that story with us i have no idea what she was referencing with uh ashley yeah i don't either i don't remember i'm sorry ashley knows it was like a cryptic message it was secret and that's okay as long as the message is conveyed that's fine there you go it's gonna bug you i know the sheep fly over the moon at zero three hundred hour <laughs> <laughs> that's my cryptic <laughs> secret message to everyone today you can decode it with your little orphan annie decoder pen uh -huh, right you will be the winner of nothing uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories uh, Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Hi. Hey, Tony and Jenny. Greetings from Missouri. I have a story for you that I remembered. I was probably 11 or 12 uh, when this happened, and I would say probably, I want to say sixth grade. Uh, my parents were going to be going to a dinner party, I think, and they said you can have friends spend the night. My sister was on vacation. I think she was with a friend or something. She may have been at camp or something, but she was not at home. I know that. And at this time, we lived in a ranch house that had three main doors, the front door, the back door that led out into our backyard, and then the door that led into the garage. And I remember as my mom was telling us, like, you can have popcorn, you know, this is the number we're gonna be at. She, was, she locked the front door, she locked the back door. And then my dog at the time, she was an older terrier mix and she she kind of just hung out in our living room and would sleep on a chair most of the time and our we had a finished basement at the time and that's where we watched movies and my dad had rented us a couple movies and we were going to just hang out and do that so my parents left and we went downstairs my friend and i and we started watching the movie probably an hour into it and my dog started barking and it was kind of like a persistent type of bark. And it was unusual because because she was older, she didn't bark that much. I mean, it really, she did here and there, but this was kind of weird. I didn't think much of it. I thought I was kind of more annoyed by it, but um, I know the doorbell didn't ring or anything like that because you can hear it in our basement. So my friend and I are kind of almost getting to the point where we're ready to go upstairs, pause the movie and see what's going on, but it finally stopped. So I think there was like 20 minutes more you know the remaining in the movie we watched it and then I was like hey let's go make some popcorn so we go upstairs and um I you know kind of come up you know I'm turning around the corner and I just I'm like frozen with fear the front door is wide open and it's not a jar it's not you know it is like somebody opened it all the way as far as it could be open and my dog was just sitting in her chair very calmly. She wasn't upset anymore. She wasn't barking. And I'm just, and it's like the, the door, there's no broken glass. There's no, 
there's no damage to the door, I should say that. And we also had a screen door that was in between the front door and the, you know, to the outside. So there was another door. And uh, my friend and I both looked at each other, and we even commented that the wind couldn't have done it because it wasn't even a windy night. It wasn't even a breezy night. So we were just dumbfounded. We're thinking, first of all, we're like, is somebody in the house? And we're kind of, you know, we're, I mean, and I, my heart was pounding so hard because I'm, I, I did not know what to do. I was absolutely, you know, you just kind of look at it and go, what is going on? And then we both looked at each other and we're like, well, that's why, you know, the dog was barking and I didn't know what to think. So we're like, what? But nothing looks other than that door. Nothing, there's, you know, nothing's ransacked, nothing but we're still absolutely freaked out. And we call my friend's father. I don't remember why we didn't call my parents. Maybe we tried to call wherever. All I know is we called my friend's father. He came right over because they live nearby and he searched the whole house. And he said, there's nothing, nothing's broken. Nothing's been, there's no uh, signs of a break in. He said that um, the only thing that was weird was in my parents' bedroom, the bedspread looked weird. And it, he asked if my dog may have jumped on the bed and like pushed part of the bedspread down because my mom would always make the beds. My mom was a neat neck. And she, um, you know, she, it, it, this looked, I know you're probably like, so what about the bedspread? But it was like, this looked weird. It wasn't like somebody flipped a bedspread over. It was like one little corner of it was down and it looked very odd. And I know that when we were walking around talking with my mom before we left, it was not like that. So I was, I, I was freaked then I thought, okay, someone was in the house, someone had to have been here, but I don't know many burglars that break into homes to push a bedspread back. So my friend's father wasn't that free. He kind of was like, he goes, look, I, he had no explanation for how the, the front door was open. He was as, as baffled as we were, but he was convinced nobody was in the house. We don't live in a bad area. Our town is very safe. In fact, probably half the residents at that time still left their doors unlocked, believe it or not. My parents didn't, but to this day, um, we don't live, we, my parents don't live in that house anymore. And even we moved when I was still living with my parents before I left for college, we moved into another home, but that neighborhood, we still have friends and there's never been break-ins. It's a very safe area. So my, that's why my friend's father was kind of like, he just, you know, shrugged his shoulders. He, he took us to Dairy Queen, made us feel better. We got to go to Dairy Queen out of it. But when my mom came home later, I talked to her about it and I showed her the bedspread and she was like, that's weird. And she did check to, to see if any of her jewelry had been missing like she maybe they didn't make a mess but she lifted her jewelry box up nothing there was nothing missing everything was perfectly fine and I you know at the time I thought somebody had been in the house but um, I think about it now and I'm like I don't think so I think that was paranormal and the reason it's just because it made absolutely no sense it's like everything would point more to that direction than it would for actually a physical person to have been in the house that was alive because I'm like I like I said what person even if you could say like somebody walked in and then maybe they figured out that somebody was home first of all how did they open the door that was locked there was no damage to it they didn't kick it in they didn't jimmy like use like you know push it in there was no glass that was broken so i don't know how they would have opened the door and then going past that it's like okay so all they're going to do is push part of the bedspread down that was kind of strange and then nothing was missing so (laughs) that didn't make any sense so um, my dog was barking at something, that's for sure. She was, it was, a, like I said, I remember it being kind of a persistent bark and unlike her at the time because of, you know, her being older and she was just much more lazy at that point because, I mean, and she just really hung out on this chair in the living room. But when we, uh, when the movie ended and we went upstairs and we found the door, the front door wide open, she was calm. She was back to kind of like, you know, chilling in her chair and everything was cool and, she wasn't, it was like she was unfazed. But when we were downstairs, man, she kept barking and barking. And we were like, you know, we we're getting annoyed. And we were about to go up there. And I'm, in some ways, I'm glad we didn't. I don't, I don't know what would, <laughs> I think about that now. And I'm like, that's crazy. But even years after it happened, my friend and I would like tell people and they would, they would say, they wouldn't, no one pointed out anything about paranormal, but everybody would think the same thing. Like that doesn't make any sense. How did that door get open? And it was an older home, like, I want to say it probably was built in the 30s or the 40s. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't fully remember. Um, and I, re- I just, 
trying to think. My parents bought it from an older couple that were retiring, and they just didn't want to take care of the yard anymore, and it was too big of a backyard. And I don't think anybody had passed away in the home. I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. And a few families had lived there over the years before my family had moved there. But it definitely was not a newer home. I mean, there was not a central air system. I remember we had... Um, I had a, you know, we had the air conditioner that would be in the window at the time. And then when we moved, I remember we had central air when we moved, but um, this was an older home. And while it, it was a beautiful home, it was still the front and the front door. That was the other thing, though, about older. This was a solid front door. I think it was solid oak and it was a heavy front door. I remember that, too. So no, bree- and it wasn't a breezy night, but even so, it would have taken one heck of a, you know, but it was locked. That's the thing I go back to. It was locked. And I don't even remember that door opening, even if it was unlocked. It, I don't remember it ever just opening. It was a very bizarre situation. And I just, to this day, you know, you think about it. But I, my, I'm thinking it may have been something else. But it definitely scared the hell out of my friend and I. Like, we were just, we thought somebody was in the house with us. But, again, we're 11 and 12 years old. You know, we didn't know what to think. And I just remember not knowing what to do. I mean, all we could, you know, we wanted to call for help. It's not like I could jump in a car and drive away because I didn't have my license at that time. So I just remember we were, we were so scared and it was probably like 10 o'clock at night by that point. So we didn't want to exactly go running out into the street or anything, you know, to look for, it was dark. You know, you just don't know what to do. I think it's just one of those things, but it's one of those things that happens to you and you're kind of like, yeah, this happened to me and I have absolutely no explanation for it. It's weird. It's just one of those unknowns, but I don't know how a locked, heavy, solid oak door gets open all the way, no damage to it, no, you know, no glass broken, you know, no, you know, no broken wood, nothing, just opens as if it's just unlocked and there's no breeze and there's nothing else and, and the bedspread. I still think that's funny. I guess, you know, they just wanted to push the bed or it just wanted to push the bedspread down, maybe to say it was there, it was his calling card. But I don't know. It was very weird. It it did there were some weird noises in that house over the years that freaked me out, but it definitely wasn't like a very active house. I know I, I hear some really, you know, scary stories on here where people live in these homes and they have stuff happen to them constantly and it's and it's horrible. I'm lucky lucky that this was it, but it definitely, there were some littler incidents where there was some weird stuff that happened, but definitely nothing like chairs stacking on a table or voices all the time or like, you know, things moving around like that. But this was just one of those things where it was like we were home alone and I don't know. It's just, it, it's something I'll never forget though. I can still see the front door open in my, you know, it's something you don't forget. It's very vivid to me, even to this day. So. But anyway, I thought I would share that with you. So I hope you're having a great week and love listening to the podcast. So uh, I am looking forward to future stories. I'm glad people have a platform to share things on here because it's uh, it's amazing what people have to say. It's there's so many of us that have stuff. So it's it's such a great show. And again, um, thank you so much. So thanks. Bye. I almost wonder with the age of the house and it seems like somebody just came home and wanted to go to bed. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that had happened before and they didn't know about it. Like it's maybe a residual thing. Yeah. And they, when there's other people in the home writing it off to, Oh, somebody left the door open, Mm -hmm. you know, or it's just such a common thing. But when you have the, the, the situation where there's just no way anyone else did this. Yeah. Then it stands out that much more. Special circumstance because obviously the parents are gone. And so you're extra vigilant mm-hmm. to make sure, you know, you're secure because you're, you're home alone. Sure. So I just kind of wonder if maybe that's all it was. And then there was no point to it. It was just kind of a, a repeat. I could see that being the case. I really could. Thank you for sharing that experience with us. We greatly appreciate it. 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Hi. Hey, guys. My name's Cherish. I live in southern Georgia on the coast. Um, I was just listening to your Butterflies Die episode and I've been listening for a little while, and this is the first time that, you know, things have kind of lined up with what I've been going through. Um, I've never really talked to anybody about it because, you know, they kind of look at you crazy when you try. And this started when I was little. 
Um, we had just moved into the house my family built when I was about four, and I would be upstairs playing in my room. My door would be open, and I would see things dart past my door out the corner of my eye. And, you know, after just moving in, my sister and I, our bedrooms were next door to each other, and she's seven years older than I am, and so, you know, she wouldn't really play tricks like that on me when I was little. We didn't play a lot together because of the age difference. Um, but, you know, thinking your sister's up to antics, I would get up and check, and she wouldn't even be upstairs. And it's not like she could have snuck downstairs really quick, because with it being a fresh house, freshly built, our stairs squeaked really bad. The wood would squeak. And this is one of my earliest memories. You know, it would happen often, and coupled with that, I would hear my name being whispered, and then I would see the darting out of the corner of my eye, and sometimes I would see a face. And after a while, I stopped getting up to check because I never felt threatened. I was never scared. It was just this weird thing that I put up with and didn't really think to tell my family. Why would I? I wasn't afraid. It wasn't something that I would remember, oh, you know, hey, Mom, hey, Dad. I saw people out the corner of my eye. I just never thought about it. Um, that stopped when I was about, I guess, seven or eight when I stopped paying, you know, Barbies and dolls and stuff like that. Um, but I was always terrified of the dark. Don't know why. To this day, I'm still pretty afraid of the dark. You know, my friends tease me, oh, you're an adult and you still won't go outside at night? Damn straight. Um, I just have this sinking fear that there's something out there that I can't see that's going to get me. Um, never outgrew it. When I was little, I had to have a nightlight in my room or I wouldn't sleep. And I've outgrown that. I feel okay indoors if it's dark. You know, I sleep just fine now. But when I was little, I had these horrible, horrible nightmares. And I, I think I get this from my dad. We both have vivid, vivid dreams to where we can smell, we can taste, we can feel. And sometimes we honestly mistake dreams for memories. Not very often, but that's how real they are. And this one dream still resonates with me from when I was little, that I was asleep. I was probably about six at this age. And in my dream, my body was heavy and there were these big grown, like muscular men hitting me, like beating me. Why would a little girl have this kind of a dream? And anytime they made contact, especially hitting me in my face, these bright lights would flash in my dream. And I woke up terrified. And I remember laying in bed going, Mommy? Daddy? And I went screaming across the house to my parents' room. And needless to say, I slept in their bed that night. And, um... I do remember several times sleeping with my parents because of really bad nightmares, but that was the only nightmare that I still remember as an adult because a lot of times you wake up and you almost instantly forget your dream, but for whatever reason, this one has stuck with me for over 20 years now. Um, nothing else really happened in the house, but then when I became a teenager, I would notice lights would flash around me and it's not just at my house it actually almost never happened at my house but it would be out in public and I was almost always by myself but buildings would flash the lights would start to flicker or lamp posts would flash and we have a really really big bridge here called the Sydney Lanier Bridge and there's lights across the entire thing it's big enough that they do a 5k um, run every February here just to give you an idea of the size and they, I was driving over it late one night, probably around 11 o'clock or midnight. And as I get to the bridge, you know, not a lot of traffic, I get to the first light and the light flickers out as I drive under it. And you know, a light flickering here or there, not that noticeable. But as I passed every light, the light would go out. And then once I had gone, driven past it, the light would come on. And just as I'm getting to the next light, that light would flicker out and then come back on as I passed it. And the entire bridge did that. So that was a little freaky. Then, you know, a little bit faster, I'm in college. And, 
you know, I'm, I'm starting to talk to this guy like, you know, young love, you hang out till 2, 3 in the morning, you're young, you do that kind of thing. And we're out on campus. I went to Georgia Southern University. And um, we're, it's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. We're by one of the big rotundas, like one of the main buildings on campus. And, you know, we get close to it. We sit down on a park bench, just talking, getting to know each other. And the whole building starts flashing. Not like, you know, the lights under the overhang or something like that. The entire building. And, you know, the guy I was talking to was like, that's kind of weird. And I'm freaking out because this kind of stuff happens all the time. And he notices my change in behavior and he's like, hey, what's up? And so, you know, I'm reluctant to tell him I like this guy. I don't want to scare him off, think I'm crazy. But finally, I'm like, you know, this this kind of stuff happens to me a lot. Like, lights flicker, that type of thing. And, you know, he kind of laughed. But as we sat there for like another hour at least, the whole building continued to flicker. We ignore it. Nothing else weird is happening. You know, I try to ignore it as best as I can, continue with the conversation. And, um, excuse me. And um, we go to leave, and as we start walking away, the further we get from the building, the less it starts to flicker. And finally, a good distance, it stops altogether. The lights come back on, nothing happens anymore. And so the last, you know, odd thing that I can remember happening, I'm out of college, I'm back in my hometown, I'm going to see a friend. It was winter time, so it got dark kind of early again. Weird stuff always happens at night for me. Wonder why I'm afraid. And um, driving to a friend's house, and I don't really know what to think about this. I have a hard time believing it myself. There's like this globe of light um, floating over one of the marshes I have to drive by. And it's just hanging there. I'm like, is it a helicopter? What's going on? You know, not really paying too much attention to it. And as I get closer, this thing just falls from the sky like faster than you would think like not just like something was there and then it fell like it plummeted to the ground into the marsh and the light went out and I'm like there's no way I'm the only one that sees this and like traffic's just going on as usual not that there was that much to begin with but what the heck like what is this thing so this is kind of a culmination of things that have happened that are odd over my life um you know, you guys are great. I love that you analyze at the end of every story. Hey, you know, it could be this, it could be that, or it could be completely paranormal. And I'm the same way. Like, anytime something happens, I try to rationalize it in my mind. I totally, totally believe in the paranormal. You know, this stuff creeps me out, but I'm still fascinated. But at the same time, like, I'm trying to constantly find a reason for strange things to happen. Anyways. Um, thanks for listening to my story. You guys are great. I've been listening for a few months now, um, and I hope to be an EPP soon. Thanks. Have a great day. I think some of that definitely was paranormal, but I think some of it is she's one of those lucky people that has interference with electrical objects. Mm -hmm. Specifically, streetlights are like the one that, that everybody seems to pinpoint. Sure. And I don't know why. I don't know what it is about a streetlight that it makes it so sensitive to some people but that is scary if you don't realize it's it's something that happens to people on a regular basis it's not like a ghost taunting you and trying to make you be in the dark every step of the way a lot of them do have like some sort of a sensor that goes on and off mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and that's not to say that oh you tripped it and it's going on and off um or maybe that is what's happening and and for what and it's not like then if if I went by it, it would happen next. Mm -hmm. It's just it's because there's something that that person is giving off that trips these things. It's it's like why sometimes the, you flip a light switch on and some child's toy gets activated. We've had that. Yeah. Um. Why every toy that's uh, electronic doesn't go off? It, it's something to do with those toys, but one's much more sensitive than the other. And it's somehow affected by that. I, there was one we that worked like that with clock, by, by clockwork. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's almost kind of how some people are. Why is this person uh, affecting this and the other person is not? May not necessarily be paranormal, but it's something about that person. It, it's it's almost paranormal just because it's you affecting something yeah. without touching it or, you know. It's abnormal. With it, it, it's Yeah, but, but in a sense, it's also not. It's something that happens on quite a... Sure. 
quite a frequent basis. Very, especially almost impossible to uh, probably pinpoint in any sort of like scientific medical mm -hmm. sense. It's just like it happens. Don't know why, but it happens. She probably also has a lot of trouble keeping a watch running too. Probably. probably. A lot of people have that. I I I'd, I'd probably agree with that. Thank you for uh, for sharing uh, that experience with us. We appreciate it. Eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two. Our number. Hello. Hi, this is Nikki from St. Louis calling again. Um, I wanted to call back and try to tell the story over again because I left some parts out. So if you can just disregard that first one. Um, so I was 15 and we moved into a, a two-family apartment building. And we had been moving around St. Louis um, for a while. Um, but anyway, um, we moved into this two-family apartment building and my grandmother uncle and aunt lived upstairs on the second floor and we moved underneath them and the first day was really really rough um, we had been moving stuff all day and um, but I I couldn't sleep because I felt like someone was watching me um, I told my mom and she said it's just a new it's a new place so that's probably why you feel that way but for weeks after that, I continued to feel uh, nervous, like someone was watching me. And um, I guess it was about three weeks after we moved in, uh, me and my mom and my younger sister were standing in the hallway um, just discussing what, what we had to do that day or where we were going when I felt somebody behind me. And I, I felt like that was my older sister. And so I turned around and I was face to face with this tall black shadowy figure um, and I screamed like I've never screamed before and my mom and it took off it ran into the wall and just disappeared and I'm a sensitive and I've seen things before but nothing ever like this and uh, my mom and my sister were yelling what's wrong with you what's wrong and I I said I just saw this big black shadow thing I can't believe you didn't see it. It was standing right here behind me, and I turned around, and there it was. And neither one of them saw it, and I just couldn't stop talking about it. Um, the second time I saw it, I guess, was a couple days later. We were all in the living room watching TV, and I just got this really weird feeling over me, like it's watching me right now. And I turned, and sure enough, it was standing in my bedroom doorway, just staring and listening and I just always got this feeling of it being really curious as to what was going on in our house. Uh, so for a couple years after that, I would see it all the time. Um, no one else would. One night, I even woke up in the middle of the night and it was floating over the top of me. And that was like the scariest um, encounter that I had had with it, even the, the first encounter I thought nothing could beat that but when I woke up and it was hovering over the top of me um, and I gasped and it it just took off um, and then I guess it was a couple years later um, I was in my older sister's room and uh, we decided we were going to walk to the store so I went through my mom's bedroom to get to my bedroom there's two doors to my room one through my mom's bedroom and one that leads to the kitchen and instead of going up the hallway through the kitchen to get to my room I went through my mom's room to get to my room and as soon as I walked in I looked into the kitchen when I was picking up my shoes and I saw it standing there at the head of the hallway just looking down and that was exactly where I just came from and uh, I was able to hold it in I was able not to gasp and let it know that I could see it and I was just staring at it and I just wanted to get a long, good stare at it to maybe figure out something, but um, I didn't get to stare at it long. Um, it just looked like a human figure. It was really big human figure, tall. Um, I couldn't see any eyes, but I, I know it had eyes. It had to, it was always like there. and I could feel it watching me. But I didn't get to, to look at it long because my older sister screamed and it took off into the wall by the basement door. 
and I walked over to where it was, and I looked down the hallway, and I saw my sister. She was just shaking, scared, and I said, you saw it, didn't you? And she said, what was that? And I said, I don't know. I've been seeing this for years. I have no idea what it is. And um, I was just so happy that somebody else finally saw it. But nobody ever saw it after that. I never saw it anymore. I don't know if it was still watching me. I don't know if it was around anymore after that. But no one else ever saw it. I was just happy that, I, you know, I wasn't the only one that was seeing it. Because, I mean, I am a sensitive, but I haven't seen anything like that before. Um, it bothered me a lot that I didn't know what it was or what it wanted. Um, anyway, years later, I have three kids and I, I told my oldest daughter about the experience that I had in that house and uh, this was quite a few years later after I told her that story that um, well, she was she was actually 14 or 15 when that happened she came and told me mom I, I got I caught that thing on camera and this isn't a, a whole different house and um, she showed me because she was uh, laying on her bed rehearsing her vocals and she takes music lessons so she was just recording herself singing and then she was going to play it back to see how she sounded and she said when she did that she noticed something behind her which behind her was her bedroom door and her closet and you can kind of see the the shadow underneath the door and it kind of slinks under the door stands up it stands there for a few seconds and watches her sing or listens to her and then it just casually walks into the closet like it was something normal for it to do all the time. Um, a lot of things did happen in that house, um, paranormal, um, but that was the, the first and only time anybody had seen that shadow figure in our, in our new house. And We've bought a, another house since then and lots of things have gone on here too. Um, and I have lots of stories, and I'll call in it some other time and tell you some more. But thank you for listening to my story. Uh, I am an EPP, and um, I, I love your show. Thank you. Bye. It kind of makes me wonder if it really is for sure the same thing. Mm hmm You know, or if it is more just general shadow person, you know? What do you mean general shadow person? I mean shadow people pretty well look the same unless they're wearing a hat or a cape or profiling they have profiling shadow people some sort of yeah I am I'm totally <laughs> profiling shadow people um you know unless it has some sort of prop if you will that yeah, like, sets it apart yeah like the hat or the cape like you're saying but yeah, yeah. I mean otherwise they, they pretty well look the same it'd be a really creepy thing for a shadow person to have and be very very confusing for a prop mm -hmm. like they got the hat if one was wearing like uh uh, like the the opera helmet that has the horns. <laughs> yeah. And and you don't you like don't, the Viking yeah, helmet. <laughs> exactly, a Viking helmet. And you don't wow. and you don't realize it's a Viking helmet. You just see and you shadow person a, with horns. A devil cone head. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If I was a shadow, if that's how I manifested myself, and I realized this and understood. Oh, they can't really see me. They just see the shadow. Um, and I had access to props. I would totally do that shit. Do a conehead one day, do the uh, the Viking helmet the next. Mm -hmm. I'd be Abraham Lincoln on President's Day. Uh, I would do so many things, you know, do like <laughs> the the Santa hat at Santa at, at Christmas time, Easter, you know, bunny ears at Easter. You just totally, you know, you totally do it for the seasons. And they think there's some sort of shadow ghost that is in correlation with it. Be a leprechaun, a little leprechaun hat. If you have the ability and you're not a shadow person, are yeah. you still going to be that festive? That'd be fun. I mean, they'd be very confusing <laughs> to the people. Why is he dressed like the Lucky Charms? Is that a... Oh, my God. Look at that box of Lucky Charms. It looks, it looks like it's from, like, 1984. It's the old logo and everything. <laughs> totally do that. I realized in that last sentence, I really sounded like a Wisconsinite for a moment. Oh my gosh, look at that old box there. <laughs> it kind of, know, it kind of like naturally came up. 855-853-4802 uh, is our number. Hi guys, this is Kristen following up on the butterfly story. Thank you for playing it. 
Uh, I was so excited. I listened to you from the beginning, and I am an EPP member, so that was a big honor to hear myself live on the air. But um, you asked the question, what happened to the butterfly? I actually don't know because I really went into a frenzy about uh, my grandmother. I was very worried. Just picture someone important in your life. You just know they're going to die, and you have minutes to try to talk to them one last time. So... Um, I guess it was a little cool, but I was not so concerned about the butterfly at that moment. Um, and that was really neat, the research that you saw about the butterfly was alive for close to a year, and it chose to die at my feet at that moment. But I also wanted to add that I found out that her real name was actually Queenie. She went her whole life being called Patricia, and it was kind of a secret that her name was Queenie because my grandfather and she decided to change her name when she came to America. And so I thought that was really neat uh, to find out and just that the monarch butterfly was the representation. She was British and was obsessed with royalty. Uh, so thank you for playing that. And how do I know they're not still at the house? I guess I don't know. Uh, for one, my grandfather doesn't appear in my dreams anymore. He used to lurk in the background of my dreams. And uh, two, I haven't seen any more signs that were just so prevalent like the butterfly, but who knows, maybe they're together and satisfied just watching all of us. So there's my answer. I don't know if that was literal or if you were musing about me following up, but there's my follow-up. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, my voice is better now. If you want me to call and repeat any of my stories, let me know. Thank you. Is that someone screaming in the back, or is that like, I couldn't tell. It's either a bird or a child. <laughs> He's a bird or a child. But, One of the two. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, it can be a kid happy squealing at something on TV. It didn't sure. sound like it was in pain and no, dying. No, it was more like, it's Elmo! Yeah, ah! right. Ah! <laughs> there you go. I do that sometimes when I see a show that I like. It's Wayward Pines! Ah! Ah! Yeah. I do do that. And the kids look at me like, what the hell's wrong with Dad? <laughs> I don't want to take care of him when he's old. <laughs> <laughs> so they like, ah. And they do, they do rock, paper, scissors. Like, who gets dad? And it's uh, <laughs> it's an awkward moment for everybody. Uh, thank you for the follow-up. I do appreciate the uh, that. I, I enjoy hearing kind of little answers yeah. to our questions. Questions I forgot I even asked. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good. And I, oh, it's all coming back to me now. I realize what I asked. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, we do uh, certainly appreciate that. Of course, uh, the episode she was referencing, if you want to go back in time, going to go back in time. Name the artist. No. Name the artist. I don't know. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're out of time. The artist is Huey Lewis and the News. Okay weather next um butterflies die was the name of the episode okay it was not that long ago couple, that's one that you named a couple weeks <laughs> it was one that i named it's so real happy to like butterflies die <laughs> what do you think of that harper <laughs> Dad, it's nice. hey, butterflies die honey. you have a pattern when you name the episodes it's usually cynical and obvious at the same time <laughs> i wonder why that is <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's me uh, there you go that wraps up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online thanks uh, for playing musical trivia with us we uh, appreciate you playing along at home tomorrow we're going to go back to the 60s and find some hit songs from that era not that I, I know a whole lot I would be better at that than you what's a good 60s song there's lots of them I, 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 there's plenty I know I just I'm bad at 60s and 70s I'm bad at identifying the, the era it came out in Especially with a lot of the music we like, because a lot of it's like late 60s, early 70s, and it's like, I don't know, it could be 68, it could be 74. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, if you like the show, keep us on the air, become an EPP extra podcast person, sign up at ghostpodcast.com to do that. Five bucks a month is all it is. Or sign up for a full year, get a month free out of that, and a bug bed bill. I have a huge pile of them right over there, <laughs> all wrapped up and ready to ship, so... Get in on that at ghostpodcast.com. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.